welcome to our second Wildlife Trust's COP28 update. Since last Thursday, we've seen the COP presidency really front-loading the negotiations with lots of different announcements. And what's notable is that the announcements we've been seeing uh, in the media in particular are not actually to do with the negotiations proper. These are all the sort of multilateral agreements that go on around the edges and particularly during the Leaders' Summit, which has been happening over the last couple of days. A few notable ones that we've seen, there was a lot of coverage of uh, 118 countries agreeing to a pledge to ramp up renewables and energy efficiency by 2030, including the UK, but that agreement didn't include some notable countries like China, India and Russia. We also saw, thinking more on the nature and food side, uh, a new food resilient food systems agreement, which was um, agreed by over 150 organisations. So this is one of the non-state actor agreements, which means it's businesses and other organisations pledging action rather than countries themselves. Um, but what's really interesting about these agreements is, is the, I suppose, the, the underlying difficulty and concern about what's happening with fossil fuel phase out agreements. So is the COP presidency really serious about um, trying to get agreements to uh, stop producing fossil fuels altogether through the COP28, particularly through the global stock take high level agreement? Or really is this all talk and no action? And it will be really interesting when we get into the negotiations proper to see where that ends up. We've also seen nature starting to take centre stage in some of the speeches and the announcements being made at COP so far. And in particular, uh, back on Friday, it was really noticeable looking at the King's speech that he mentioned nature no less than eight times in quite a short speech. And it's really, really interesting how he's combined nature and climate together. As I've tried to say on many occasions, unless we rapidly repair and restore nature's unique economy, based on harmony and balance, which is our ultimate sustainer, our own economy and survivability will be imperiled. As we work towards a zero carbon future, we must work equally towards being nature positive. Now that's really the sorts of messages that we as the Wildlife Trust try to communicate as well. And it was fascinating to see that really being a central part of the King's speech. Interestingly, the Prime Minister also gave a speech on the same day, and he did mention nature, but only once in his speech. And we've seen Razan al-Bubarak, the high-level champion and also president of the IUCN. She's been very active over the past couple of days, looking at uh, a whole series of announcements on nature, including lots of new nature finance pledges. Uh, the UK hasn't been part of these, although it did make some domestic nature announcements before COP started. But we've seen over $100 million being pledged by UAE to support uh, climate and nature projects. Uh, and a whole raft of other announcements, but I think we need to see the detail under these to really understand what they are and how significant they are. But it's great to see nature taking that centre stage before the actual nature theme day on the 9th of December, which we're looking forward to. One of the areas on nature as well, which is more of a technical discussion that's being had in the negotiations proper, but is really important for us in the UK and particularly at the Wildlife Trusts, is to do with how we look at accounting of carbon emissions and removals by different countries. This sounds like a really technical point and it is, but it has a huge bearing on how we understand the role of nature in meeting net zero commitments. And to date, it's certainly been the case that lots of different aspects of nature, whether it's blue carbon or whether it's understanding the role of managed lands and what we would call unmanaged or wilderness lands, uh, how those all interact in these carbon accounts means that they're probably undervaluing the role that nature plays in carbon accounting and therefore in net zero journeys nationally, but also at the global level. And some of the groups have been sent away to try to bring clarity on how nature will play its role in those carbon trading agreements. And obviously that's something that we'll be watching with interest. Over the next few days, we're going to be watching progress very carefully on the global stock take. This is where all parties have to sit down and spell out how they're going to meet the enormous gap between current country pledges on emissions reduction and meeting the aims of the Paris Agreement. And as well as that, we've obviously got Nature Day coming on the 9th of December. We'll be looking for more commitments on finance for nature, but also, as I mentioned, how nature is being dealt with in these more technical discussions on accounting and also carbon trading. 
So my next update will be coming to you on Wednesday and we'll be looking to see what's happened with the global goal on adaptation, what's happening with those technical discussions on accounting and also how the negotiations on the global stock take are going. So I'll see you then. Thank you.